Hey everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with a uh, weekly coronavirus update. Um, today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about what's going on. This sort of third wave of the virus we're in and really you know, how is it that we ended up in such a bad place and honestly looking forward potentially a really, really bad place. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on, what all these press reports mean, what it means to you and your families. Uh, as usual, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board-certified emergency medicine physician and uh, a functional medicine physician here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I run a, a, a clinic here called Vitality Medical Wellness Institute where we focus on optimizing people's health, but I also practice in the emergency department still. Um, what's happening? We know that there's a surge going on. States are locking down left and right. You know, People are resisting. They're unhappy. How did we get here? What happened? Well, you know, it looks like we are in a sort of a third surge. And behind me here, I've got an interesting graph which shows basically deaths and cases since this all began. Remember, we had the first death, I think, in the U.S. in February, so about nine months into it. And you can see here, when we first heard there was this big old spike of deaths early on, it was like New York City where we had just outrageous numbers and a spike in cases. And then we, we locked down and we, we had people you know, locked down, shut businesses down, shut the economy down, and we had a precipitous decline in cases and uh, in deaths and in cases. And then what do we do? Well, a bunch of our states had protests against lockdowns, and, and while case numbers were still going up, they opened back up. And what happened then? We had a second surge in the summer that was completely avoidable, but we had this big surge, had a big surge in deaths and cases, and as you can see, the deaths, which is the black line, and the cases lag each other. So deaths lag typically by about four to six weeks after uh, reported cases. And then what happened? We, we had the summertime. Well, we know that these viruses don't spread so well in the summer because it's harder to spread it out in, you know, when you're outside and people, you know, kids are out of school and people are on vacation and numbers sort of moderated. We got things back under control towards the end of the summer. And then what happened? Schools opened. And, and really driver of infections wasn't, you know, elementary, grade school, and high school, it really was colleges. So we had colleges start back up, and again, we had started having this big spike in cases again starting in, in September, and now we're getting this sort of exponential logarithmic growth of cases. Um, so we're really in a third wave, and you know, I just want to, you know, I was reading an article in The Atlantic from about a month ago, and it was, it was a, an article warning about these explosion of cases and how concerned they were. And that was on October 15th. Today's November 17th. And I just compared, you know, numbers from the article to what's going on today. So on October 15th, they were worried because the seven day average of new cases had set a new record, 51,000 cases as a seven day average. Today, the seven day average is 150,000 cases, three times as many. The seven day average of deaths back a month ago was 877. Today it's 1128 and rising quickly. Um, the new case percentage over the preceding two weeks on October 15th, so looking at the change in cases in the, in the two weeks up to that date was 18%. The change in ca cases over the last two weeks has been an increase of 85%. The percentage of increased deaths for the two weeks preceding the article in October was 3%. The, the two week average of increase in average of deaths in the last two weeks has been up 38%. The number of hospitalizations a month ago in the country was 37,000. Today it's 73,000. And the number of red zone states, which were states that were considered to be have completely out of control spread, was 26 on October 15th. It's 42 today. And the other remaining eight are orange, which is just really fast spread, not uncontrolled spread, but fast spread. Um, and so that leads us to, you know, our, our numbers today, you know, 166,000 new cases in the last day, um, deaths nearly 1,000, we're up to 11.2 million cases in the, in the nation, 250,000 deaths. And we are really looking at what I consider a very concerning time. I had our emergency medicine group meets every month and we had our, our meeting today and you know, interestingly, I think I've alluded to the fact that we're boarding a lot of patients in the emergency room because there's no beds for them. So we have these patients, a lot of them with COVID and the hospital's full. And so we've got to keep them in the emergency department, which is not ideal because, you know, nobody wants to get taken care of in the emergency department in a hallway because there are no beds. And also our emergency nurses are not really 
trained and, and interested in taking care of floor patients so you don't get as good care. So we really don't want to board people in the emergency department. There was a day recently where we had 38 boarders in our department. Well, interestingly, um, we were going through the, the numbers today and we've essentially been boarding patients in our emergency department um, for several months now. I think, you know, we've got a total of 60 or 70 days of boarding of days where we've actually had to board patients in the emergency department. Um, and compared to 2019, for the entire year, we had three days that we did that. So something's up. And, and the concern is, you know, this explosion of cases. And these numbers, you know, portend bad things. Um, and that's why, we, we, you know, you've got to put the nonsense politics aside. Listen, the mask thing is decided. It's clear that it works. Distancing is decided. It's clear that it works. The science is irrefutable at this point. And look what happens when we don't do it. And the fact of the matter is we've got some vaccine candidates on the horizon. They may well, you know, save our bacon from this because they the initial ones look like they're they're promising. But remember, it's going to be four or five months before those things are generally available. And it may be over a year before everybody can have access to it. And so for the next four or five months, we have got, we are looking at a really a crisis potentially. Um, and the problem that I see from my world is that when the hospital's full, wh what do you do with people who are sick? What happens if you have a car accident or a gunshot wound or a heart attack or a stroke and there's no room in the inn? Um, more people are gonna die, people are gonna do badly. I look around, you know, my colleagues are burning out. The nurses are burning out. The, the techs are burning out. The doctors are burning out. Um, you know, you got to give us a, a little bit of a hand here, folks. Just please do these, you know, these really, really simple things. You know, put your mask on. You know, is it that, you know, I don't care what your politics are. You know, when you go into a store, you know, they force you to wear pants and underwear, right? So what's the difference between being forced to wear pants versus wear, forced to wear, wear a little piece of cloth over your face? And we really got good science now that shows it not only protects others if you happen to have it, but it protects um, you as well. We need to do everything we can to sort of flatten this curve. We talked about this early on, flattening the curve so we don't overwhelm the hospital systems. Well, you know, look at North Dakota and South Dakota. Look at what's happening to those hospitals. There is no room. And... You know, it's happening out west now, but it's going to start spreading. I posted on our um, on our uh, Facebook page today a video from Johns Hopkins. It's a little video about the numbers today. And I think the most disturbing thing is at the very end of that video, there's a map of the U.S. with like red spots of hot spots. And if you notice the that video at, towards the end of it, as it gets, it kind of is a rolling average over the last two weeks, you'll notice that what's happening to those red areas in the last like 48 hours, they went from like little small ones and they're starting to balloon out into these huge areas of spread. So, you know, let's try to do our best. You know, we, we've got to work together. We've got to put personal beliefs aside. No one's trying to, to impinge your rights, but you know what? People have a right to be healthy as well. People have a right to have hospitals available, providers available if they get sick or they get hurt. And if we don't do something, we are looking at some very, very serious consequences for all of us. Um, I'm gonna stop it there. I'll uh, be back uh, soon. I think I'm gonna do a, a Facebook Live um, next week, early next week, possibly with Dr. Bream and uh, maybe a few other doctors as well. So I'll post some information about that on our Facebook page. As usual, if you find this useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you get notifications when I post. Um, like and follow our Facebook page as well. Information is in the, the notes here. Um, we'll talk a bit more about viruses and, and other things, or vaccines rather, later in the week. Everybody stay safe as usual. Wear your mask, wash your hands. Keep that distance. Look after yourselves. Look after your family. Look after those around you. We'll get through this. God bless.